What's up guys, Damien Keys here, welcome back to the channel. So today we're talking about 1,000 fans in 30 days. Now I wanna make this really clear. This is not 1,000 subscribers. This is not 1,000 followers or 1,000 people who are aware of you. This is 1,000 fans. We are talking the type of person that will break into your house and do stuff on your pillow. We are talking the type of fan that will send you some of their hair possibly not even from their head. And we are also talking the type of fan that wherever you will go, they will find you. They will find you. But first of all, before we get started, I want to know what is the biggest challenge you are currently facing so that I can make some more videos in the comments below Tell me the biggest struggle that you are currently facing because that will help me plan my next batch of videos. So with that in mind, let's get on to my 30 day strategy. This plan revolves around three things. Number one, eyeballs. Eyes on the prize. Number two, value. Value. And number three, legacy. These three things, eyes, value, legacy. Now this is the process people go through to become a fan. They don't see a picture which is attached to a hashtag and then run out and buy your overpriced hoodie. No, no, no. They have to go through a process of finding you getting value from your content and your music, and then over time, becoming a fan through legacy. Now this whole process takes some time, and musicians and bands are usually pretty good at this. This is getting people to see what you do. So what fits into this category? Well, let's stick some ideas in. Number one, the ask. So this is, Every single time you meet someone who doesn't subscribe to you, you ask them, are you subscribing to my YouTube? Are you a follower on my Instagram? Do you subscribe to my shit? Do you see me? Because I want you to see all the great things that I'm doing. Now this is a big one. Whenever a band shows me their YouTube and they've got 100 subscribers, this is the first thing I think of. Before you start throwing money into ads and boosts and everything else, have you actually asked your friends and family to actually sign up and be a part of your YouTube, subscribe to it and be a part of your Instagram? Because you can get a lot of traction on YouTube just from this one thing. Another thing that fits into this is conversation. So conversation effectively doesn't have to start offline, it can start online. You can start getting into people's comments, you can start DMing people and having conversations, chatting about music, chatting about venues, chatting about culture, and then start dropping some bombs also about your band. But this is having conversations that you can start to tell people a bit more about your band. So how else would people hear about you? Well, how about your trusty gigs? Okay, so therefore, you are going to go and do some gigs. People are gonna go and see some bands you might be on before or after them, and they might go, who's this? They're gonna stick around and they're gonna see it, you, and they're gonna hear about you. That is another way we can actually get people to hear about you, get their eyeballs on you. And lastly, another way that you can get people's eyeballs on you is adverts and boosts. So you're on your Instagram, you're on your Facebook, you post something, you stick in a fiver, and you push it out to people who might have heard of you but probably haven't, so they can go, who's this? And all of a sudden, they know who you are. So this is getting eyeballs on you. Now this is something that you guys don't struggle with. You are musicians, you're extroverts, you're usually good at getting people to see what you do. But that isn't making fans, that's awareness. Okay, so people are getting eyeballs on you, they are now aware of you, but we have to bring them value. So, the value column. What can we put in here to bring people value? Well, first things first, your music. Obviously, your music is the most important stuff. Everything revolves around your music. Now, your music is the heartbeat of everything you're gonna do, but you probably can't put out music every single day. So, your music might be coming out once a month, might be coming out every couple of months, but we have to be filling in with more value and we can't just rely solely on new music. Next is your mission. Now, your mission is what everything else fits into. It's the big picture. And if you saw my Elon Musk Tesla video uh, this week, 
you'll see that the cars fit into the bigger picture of changing and saving the world. So what does your music fit into your mission? How does it all fit together? That's where things become very interesting and it's not just music after music, it's what the whole thing, what you stand for and who you are and why you're doing it, it's the big why. So this fits into the value, people like this stuff. And lastly, content. Your social media content that you are putting out. Now, as we said, you can't put out music every day, probably. So when you aren't putting out music, what are you doing to bring value? Now, this is where your social media content comes in. And I think most acts and artists and bands and musicians overcomplicate this. This is where all of your music and all of what will go in this column and your mission all fit into what you're putting out there. Now with your content, I recommend that you decide on the frequency, but then you allow your music, your mission, and everything that's going to legacy, which we'll come back to, then to start dictating the actual content that goes out. So you're dictating how often, and the rest of it is dictating what. Okay, so we've now got the awareness, the eyeballs. People are seeing you and going, okay, I know who you are. And then you're providing the value and people are going, okay, I'm interested, you have my attention. Very different from awareness to properly having someone's attention. But they aren't fans, they certainly aren't super fans. So we've got to make it to the next level, which is how we push people over the edge into fandom. And that is legacy. This column is what you can do to create a fan from a subscriber. What can we do on a daily slash weekly basis to really bring super value, to go past just bringing your story and the value, but to do something in legacy terms that creates a fan? So the first thing we can do, nice and simple, competitions, giveaways, I'm sure you guys do that. I wanted to put this in because I don't think people do this well enough. And when it comes to competitions and giveaways, what bands tend to do is they tend to think it from what they want. And so therefore you have this bartering system. If you do this, I will give you this. That's trading, that's not a competition or a giveaway. I think a giveaway is actually, I'm gonna give you this because I think it's a really cool thing to do and hopefully, hopefully, you'll spread the word because of it. Now, if you're trying to give away free music that they can already get on Spotify, pointless. If you're trying to give away some really great merch, well, that's pretty cool. So think about what it is that you're giving away, but giving away something which has an emotional tie-in is much more powerful. And do it so that you are just putting it out there and hoping then that they will spread the word and that is how you get the return of investment. And now on to the biggie, biggie, big one. One-to-one -one legacy. What can you do that is going to really push people over the edge on a one-to-one -one basis. So what I mean by this is, if you can look after one person like they've never been looked after before, not only will that one person become a fan, but there's a good chance that they will drag a bunch of their friends or family with them, and you're gonna get five, 10, 15, 20, or a thousand for the price of one. Now this is where the likes of Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift and all those sort of pop artists, they really understand this culture. They understand if they look after one person so well, it will become a bit viral and they will get thousands of fans from looking after one person. Therefore, the return of investment is colossal. Now, as this is a 30-day strategy, this is the most important part of the video. In a minute, I am not only gonna give you some examples of one-to-one -one legacy, but as it's a 30-day strategy, I am going to give you 30 strategies, 30 one-to-one -one legacy strategies that you can implement every single day should you want to. Now, don't say I don't give you anything. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, I don't know if leastly is a word, your comments. Now your comments is the easiest and cheapest way to guarantee going from subscriber to fan. And let me tell you why. I am on a mission to get people to actually sort out their comments. And every time you send me your links, the first thing I do is I go straight to your YouTube and whilst I am watching a video, I'll scroll down and I'll see how you look after your subscribers. Now what tends to happen, pretty much without exception, is someone will go on your YouTube, they'll watch it and they'll go, oh, this is really, really great. And then you either leave it, leave it blank and nothing happens, or 
a little bit of your brain kicks in and you go, oh, Damien always tells me I need to reply to the comments. So you click reply and you go, thanks, mate, or cheers, bro, or appreciate it, or this means a lot. And as soon as you do that, conversation's over. Relationship stopped, everything, you've just been killed off. You have now no chance of creating that into and selling it into a super fan because you have stopped it at subscriber. You have said, know your place. This is my house. So you just watch, come back next time. Why don't we start a conversation? And how hard is it to start a conversation? It's as simple as this. Dude, love the video. Oh, thank you so much. That's amazing. Um, where are you from? Well, I'm from Mexico. Oh, cool, Mexico. I've never been to Mexico. I'd love to go to Mexico. Tell me about Mexico. What do you do in Mexico? I'm in a band. Yeah, oh, send me your music. Let me have a look. I'd love to check out your music. It's as simple as that. It's literally a conversation with a relationship. This is guaranteed to get you fans if you build relationships, and it is the most underrated way of doing this strategy that you can have. So let's stop with the thumb, let's stop with the cheers, the thank you, the appreciate it, until you've got so many comments that you can say, do you know what, I'm getting 100, 200 comments on every video, so I can, I can whittle it down a little bit, I can optimize at that point, but at this point, every single comment you get on any social media platform is 100% gold. Now, because this is a 30-day strategy, I have got my trusty 30-day schedule. I use this bad boy all of the time. Um, and you can make this yourself on Word. Um, but if you don't want to, then this is also available in my exclusive uh, group, which all the information is down below, as well as PDFs and, and daily content that we're making. And it's a great community. So if you want to be a part of that, then uh, and check that out on my website. Okay, so day one, which we're gonna fill in our strategy. Day one is all about banners. Now I am on a mission to get you to sort out your banners. Now your banner is the, the big thing across the top of your YouTube. It's the first piece of real estate that people will see. It's also on your Facebook. There's one on your Twitter. So your banner is a piece of real estate that is very, very important to tell the story of who you are, why you're doing it, and why, more importantly, people should subscribe, why they should come back again. Now this not only tells the story of who you are and having a great picture, but also it adds in the accountability. Why should I come back? Why should I subscribe? Well, the reason is, is because you are going to tell people a new video every single week or new video every single day. But when you do this, you're giving people a reason to subscribe. They now know, oh, I'm supposed to come back. So what is the point in getting the eyeballs, which we've got all this, what's the point of getting the eyeballs if none of them are going across to see the value and they're not able to get across to the legacy? So we are gonna make our first mission the banner. Text-wise, keep text really small, nice and simple, something like Damien Keys, music industry advice, new videos every week. At least people know exactly who I am, what I do, and when I'm gonna post which leads me on to how much content you are gonna create. You are in charge of the frequency of your content. So what I'm gonna put in here is a content commitment. So I want you to think how often you're gonna post on YouTube and how often you're gonna post on Instagram. I would recommend once a week on YouTube and I would recommend that would probably be on a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday and I would recommend once every single day on Instagram. And in this, we will put some of this stuff in, but I want you to commit to the frequency of social media that you are gonna put out. Now then, day two, day three, and day four are very simple. The ask, okay? I'm gonna put that on three days. Now, everyone watches my channel to get some kind of magical hack. Well, this is the hack. There is no hack, but, the ask is how you start to build your social media faster. All social media is built on an algorithm, which means more people who watch, more people who actually pay attention, more people who value it by liking it, subscribing, just general watch time or being a part of it, that all goes into this supercomputer where they factor in how good your content is and that means they'll show it to more people. So even if it's friends, family, even if it's your mum, it doesn't matter. If people are watching, it will be taken in and stored and you will get points for that, for that engagement. 
So for these three days, before we start worrying about superfans, what we're gonna do is we are going to ask, and now I would recommend an hour every single day. Maybe you could start the first day with your socials, the second day could be your emails, and the third day could be your phone, depending on how much time you've got. But we've all got hundreds of friends on socials, so therefore, don't blanket it. Don't put a status out and say, everybody, I've got a new Facebook. Everybody, I've got a new YouTube. Can you subscribe? Nobody will do it. I want you to ring people. I want you to bug people like a salesperson. I want you to text them. I want you to email them. I want you to one-to-one -one DM them and say, I need a favor. We are mates. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, what you're doing is you're kickstarting it. You are actually doing the old defibrillator heart onto your YouTube so that YouTube is seeing more people subscribe, more people start to watch some content and it says, oh, maybe I'll start throwing it out to people outside of the people who don't subscribe. Before we do anything else, this is the first way of actually getting numbers and engagement and people watching. Now we're concentrating on the eyeballs to start with. This column here, how do we get in front of people? So a nice simple way of doing that is some social media adverts or some boosts. But how you do this is very, very important. But we are gonna put this somewhere in the first week. I'm gonna put it in day five. Ads and boosts. Now, when you're putting out ads or boosts, what is it that you're doing it for? What do you want people to do? Rather than just boosting a piece of content, you wanna boost a specific piece of content that asks them to do something. Now, I recommend, as you've decided on your content commitment, which I think should be a weekly YouTube piece, I think it should be a very small part of who you are and then say, new video out on YouTube every single week, and the call to action would then be, subscribe to watch the journey. So how about this for an example? Are you a musician or in a band or write your own songs? In which case, maybe I can help. My name's Damien Keyes and I've been in music education for over 20 years. I make weekly videos to help artists and bands build their marketing, their social media, and their fan base. So if you're interested to find out more and you are serious about your music, then swipe up to find out more. A really simple advert that you can do in 30 seconds that then you can boost to start getting more eyeballs on what it is that you do. Now let's move out of the eyeballs column and see if we can bring more value to your audience. Now in your 30 day schedule, you should have your weekly commitments and we should probably put those in. Now you can fill them in the way that you wanna fill them in. But one of the things I want to do is I wanna have your commitment to content. I suggest one video on YouTube every single week, maybe a Tuesday, which I'm gonna put in on day two. So every Tuesday, we are gonna put in YouTube video. Same thing the next week. I'm gonna put in YouTube video. Next week, oops. I'm gonna put in YouTube video. Next week, YouTube video. And the last one, YouTube video. Same goes for rehearsals, photo shoots, and recording. Everything should be in here. I suggest a photo shoot every second week. So I'm gonna put that in on, let's say, a Thursday, and I'm gonna put it in here, photo shoot. And I'm gonna put it on day 20, a photo shoot, just so you know what's coming. Now what the photo shoot does is it gives you more content for your social media. It gives you another chance to add value. It gives you another chance to tell your story of who you are and why you're doing it and just doing something interesting rather than trying to take a picture on the day because you've got your beans on toast in front of you. Now what about your rehearsals? Hopefully you're rehearsing every single week. So why don't we put in the rehearsals? Rehearsal. Rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. You're planning the whole thing out and where it's all gonna fit together and how you can fit the rehearsals into your social media. Another thing you can do to bring value is potentially an Instagram Live. So what about IG Live? We'll put that in on Wednesdays. IG Live, IG Live, IG Live, and IG Live. And then, once you've done that, there's something very, very important, and that is allocating between 15 and 30 minutes every single day for conversation. So from day five, I'm putting in conversation. Now, I'm not gonna write it in 30 times, 
but you can see it's going to go across every single day because going back to these comments anytime someone dms you anytime someone puts a comment that's an opportunity for you to create a relationship which will become a fan if you follow the legacy model which we're about to put in place I think it's absolutely crucial to factor that 15 to 30 minutes into your schedule so that you don't forget because it's the most consistent way to take a follower to a fan. And so many people aren't subscribing. In fact, get this for a stat. On my YouTube channel, 66% of the people who watch every single month don't subscribe to my channel. That's right. I know who you are. But those 66% who don't subscribe to my channel and still watch, I mean, they're part-timers, what can I say? I mean, they don't, they're not serious about their music. They're just casuals. But I know you're serious because you subscribe to my channel and that makes you a serious musician. Seriously though, these conversations do need to be factored in because they are your bread and butter and we are creating relationships and not relationships. So on to the final part of this video and probably the most important part, which is 30 legacy ideas, 30 things that you can do to take someone from seeing your content and being aware of you and having that attention through to a fully fledged fan. Now there's two rules to legacy club. I just made that up. Number one rule is you don't make the fuss they do. You do something that creates one person legacy and you do it in front of everybody, but you don't make a big fuss about it. You let them make a big fuss. This is like charity. You can't go, I'm giving the money to charity because then you're a dick. So what you've got to do is you've got to do it, hope someone notices and they can spread the word for you. And rule number two, when you're doing this, this is a vehicle to get people to comment. And when people do comment, you jump on it and you start that conversation and you take that opportunity to start creating these fans. Number one, the handwritten letter. Why not handwrite 10 letters to 10 of your favorite followers? Now, they might already be fans, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna write that letter and send it to them by getting their address, and when they get it, I guarantee at least 50% of them will spread that all over social media and do that work for you. Number two, you are gonna buy yourself a notebook, maybe a nice pretty notebook, and then over the next couple of weeks, you are gonna start filling it in with lyrics and thoughts and parts of your day, possibly some doodles, some art, anything that you can get from quotes to just a chorus of your track that comes from you. And then what you're gonna do is once it's full, you are gonna give it to one person and say, do you know what, this is my trusty notebook. It's, this has seen us through in the band for the last however long it is. I would like you to have it because you mean a lot to me. Number three, I want you to make a picture or lyric book. Really, really simple. I want you to go and look through all your pictures of the band. I want you to go and print them out. I want you to stick them in a book and I want you to give them to someone in your audience. Maybe some notes in there as well, but just a nice personal gift for one person. Number four, a really simple one. Why not make a video performance with a personalized message and then send that to someone? Why don't people do that? I don't understand. Whenever they make a video of them singing, they stick it on YouTube or Instagram. Why can't you do this on a one-to-one -one basis? Why can't you find someone, that one nutty fan that you've got, and just say, I just appreciate you. I'm gonna make you a video of a song, me performing that song with a personalized note with your name in it, and I'm gonna send it to you, and no one else is gonna see it, but I bet you a lot of other people will end up seeing it. Number five, invite some of your audience to come to your next photo shoot. Why not even get them in your next photo shoot? Because what a fun thing to do. What are you doing on Saturday? Not a lot. Why don't you come and be in our photo shoot? It's gonna be a hell of a laugh. Most people will go, that sounds fun. They get to hang out with you, talk about music. What better way for you then to be able to turn them into a fan? Number six, the next time you record a song, you are gonna bring in someone from your audience and you are gonna get them to record on your next single. Whether it's cowbell, whether it's a bit of guitar, or whether it's just some group BVs, it doesn't make any difference because they will spread that word for you. Number seven, something I talk about a lot, give away a VIP pass for life, which means that person gets to come to any one of your gigs wherever, whenever, forever. 
And what that means is you are always going to have someone who potentially comes to your gigs, but also they'll probably bring their mates at the same point. And you better believe they will tell everybody because that is such an awesome gift. Number eight, a treasure hunt. I actually saw a band doing this about a year ago. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Just before their gig, they actually set up a treasure hunt around the venue that they were playing. And in, in some hidden corner, there was a 12 pack of beer that everybody who took part was looking for. One person won it. And it was just like a really cool, awesome thing. They were talking about it all night long. Tip number nine, next time you're doing a gig, bring someone on stage with you, but don't just bring them on stage, get them involved. Give them a microphone or take some pictures with them and the audience and post it onto your social media so everybody can see. Number 10, what about writing a song with one of your audience members? Bring them in and say, we're gonna write a song. You are gonna help us write a song. How cool would it be when they say, I helped write that song. That lyric was something that I came up with. I was there when that happened. How hard is that gonna be for you? Not hard at all. Number 11, FaceTiming with your audience. Yes, you can do an Instagram Live, but there's just something a bit more personal on a one-to-one -one basis to FaceTime some people in your audience and just have a chat. Someone who pops up on a comment to just say, oh, you pop up on my comments quite a lot. I reckon we should have a, have a convo. Let's do a FaceTime. All of a sudden, you're sat on FaceTime chatting about your music, what they're into. Guaranteed, this is going the extra mile that will help. And number 12, something that's powerful but very easy to do is leaving voicemails on Instagram instead of texting because it comes across as a bit more personal. It's really, really easy, it's faster than texting and automatically you are breaking that barrier of the us versus them and you're saying, come on into my world. Number 13, set up a private WhatsApp group just for the people who want to be involved, for a little bit of extra content, for a few extra pictures, for a little bit of extra attention to detail that you can give one-to-one within that WhatsApp group. Number 14, set up a closed Facebook group. Now, this is where the trend tends to be going with social media because the algorithm is cutting stuff off and this could be great for your close fans or for your audience members that really wanna find out more. You bring them in, you say hi. It's just a closer conversation that you can have. Maybe some more content, maybe some more personal content. And instead of having to put out that content that you're trying to break with the algorithm, this can be just a bit more personal content that you just say, this is stuff around and about that we like to do for us to have conversations. Number 15, you go and perform at someone's house. Yes, that's right, you pick up your guitar, you travel to someone's house, you say, we're coming in, put the kettle on, we're gonna sing some songs. It could be as simple as that, but again, something that nobody does. Number 16, and while you're there at someone's house, why not give them a goodie bag? Yep, you've got all of that merch under your bed. You've got those CDs that you can't sell because no one's got a CD player anymore, but you can sign all of that stuff and give it to someone in a box and say, here, we did this for you because we really appreciate you. Number 17, feature your audience in your Instagram stories. Why not? Why not tell the stories of your audience in your Instagram stories? How cool would that be? To say, hey, this is Marjorie and she follows our music and she's awesome and she lives here and this is what she does and this is her story. Marjorie's gonna be stoked, she's gonna become a fan and what's she gonna do? She's gonna share it to all of her social media. Number 18, do a collab with a co-creator. Now this is easier than you think. I'm not talking about someone who's miles ahead of you with subscribers. I'm talking about someone who's within your sphere, within your genre, and you do a collab. Because what it is, is two worlds coming together. Now I've done this several times. Um, one I did with Burstamo, who you guys have probably seen. And I had a really great chat with Maddie and Alex. It was really, really good fun. And loads of people were in the comments being like, oh, I watch both of your channels. And they both come together. And then people from both sides start spreading the word and Again, you start building your subscribers and growing your fan base. Number 19, go busking, and then maybe give the money to charity because these things don't go unnoticed. But when you're there, go in busking with a really great sign, with your socials, and then you get a pot of money, you're probably gonna make 20 quid or 30 quid. Why not just go and give it to the dog's home or do something where you can take a picture and add it to your social media. Number 20, the breakfast tour. Why not, in the summer, every week, just have a little breakfast barbecue out in the local park and invite anyone who wants to come, and hey, 
you can bring the sausages and you can bring the bacon butties. Or if you're vegan, you can chow down on some sprouts, whatever it is. But in doing so, you're saying, hey, come and be a part of our world. They can get a bit closer to you and it's a great chance for you to build these relationships and it is a great way of turning people into a fan. Number 21, reverse engineer pictures at gigs. So you know you're at a gig and you've just played and someone goes, oh, can I get a picture? What if you flip reverse it? What happens if you wander around going, hey, can I get a picture of you for our social media? And they'll go, oh yeah, that's great. And then what you do is you do the usual band photograph with someone, but then you put it on your socials, you tag them in with their name, with their actual um, Instagram handle, and at that point, they will do the sharing for you. Number 22, put on a free event, and this could potentially have you playing, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Why not go and bring a bunch of PlayStations and put them somewhere and say, everyone come down, we're having a PlayStation event or a, or a Nintendo event or a sack race event. It doesn't matter what it is. What matters is you provide the snacks, you provide the entertainment, and you are bringing in the community to have a chat and be at one with you. Number 23, give some production credits on your album to some of your audience. Why not? Was it hurt? It's just a little bit of real estate on your album. Okay, maybe they haven't done that much, but they've supported you, so why not recognize it? And where better to recognize it on a CD that you're gonna give to them as merch anyway? Number 24, and I love this one, send postcards to your audience from wherever you are on tour. Why not, when you're in Prague on tour or you're off to another part of America, you buy post, you buy 10 postcards and you fill them in, having a great time, blah, 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 and you send it to people in your fan base, in your audience, so they're actually gonna get a handwritten postcard from the band that they love. Number 25, we're always talking about releasing and what we want people to do, but what about actually rewarding a few of the, the fun people that are always around and about in your audience with some early access, some, some early content? This is going out tomorrow, but I really wanted to show you because I value you. Now, in doing so, you're saying you're more important than everybody else, and therefore, they will tell the world that they are more important than everybody else. And what does everyone else think? They want to be more important than everyone else, two, you better believe they'll be jumping on that bandwagon. Number 26, invite some people out for some drinks or some food before a gig. I mean, you do a gig, you're gonna be sound checking at 5.30, you know what it's like, you're just gonna be hanging around backstage or in the tour bus. Why not say, hey, this is where we are, who wants to come out for a drink? You might get one, two, five, 10, 15 people. Look, have a drink with them, make some new friends. Guaranteed, they'll do the same thing on the next gig. They'll be there early and they'll be telling everyone. Number 27, the massive after show party. I hate it when bands finish a gig and they nip backstage and then you don't see them again and then they pack up and then they go home. What, what a wasted opportunity. People have traveled to come and see you play live. At that moment, you get out into the audience, you say, thank you so much for coming. Hey, we're gonna have an after show party at the pub or we're gonna go here, why not stick around for some drinks? And invite 10, 20 people to stick around with you. And again, watch those pictures get taken and flow straight through social media. Number 28, happy birthday videos. Yes, it's an obvious one, but people value that stuff. If you can send a little birthday video saying, hey, happy birthday, thank you so much for being part of our audience, maybe even sing them happy birthday, it will go a long way. Number 29, hand deliver merch when someone buys it. Yes, I know people can buy merch from all over the world, but what happens when it is local? Why can't you go and hand deliver it, knock on the door and say, hey, I personally wanted to deliver this and say thank you so much. That goes in and that will be recognized because someone's valued you enough to buy your merch. If you turn up to deliver it, they will probably shit themselves. And number 30, why not give an audience member a guitar lesson? Teach them some of your songs. What a fun thing to do. Come down, let's have a guitar lesson. Let's have a drum lesson. Let's get involved in the music together. Chances are, once they've learned something, they'll take straight to their social media and say, hey, look what I've learned, this song by this band. So that's 30 legacy ideas. You can come up with your own ideas. You guys are creative enough. But what this shows is what people are not doing compared to what they could be doing. This is all feasible for you to be doing. 
It's just effort and hard work. And if you want to build the fans, if you want to take them from, yes, I know who you are, to, yes, I will buy your merch and I will be at your gig, this is the stuff that goes the furthest. So thank you so much for watching. If this video has brought you value, then I'd love it if you could like, subscribe. More importantly, come and be a part of this community because we're doing this every day. And I'm so proud to watch how you guys are growing. Also, if you want to be a part of my exclusive community where you get a bit more access to me and we can work on your stuff together, then check out in the description below. More importantly, I want to hear about your legacy ideas, so leave them in the comments. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow.